Hello, Hi. we're all present. <laughs> Happy Halloween. Friends and relatives, so fond and dear, tis our greatest pleasure to have you here. When many years this day has passed, fondest memories will always last. So we drink a cup of Irish mead and ask God's blessing in your hour of need. When deciding to marry someone, one must know all the traditions that go along with the wedding being celebrated. The tossing of the bouquet, the reading of original vows, and so much more. Same goes when a divorce is in place. The traditions are less happy but still present. For example, who gives the kids? Does the property and wealth get split, split evenly? What I just read to you is a traditional Irish wedding toast. I'm going to speak on Irish marriages and divorces. I believe that I'm a very credible source as far as speaking on this topic because I've been spending the past month researching everything about it and making sure that I have found every source possible that would give me a good foundation as to what I'm going to talk about. So I will speak first on Irish marriages, then traditions that are included in which follow in which follow the marriages, and second I will speak about divorces and its traditions. I'm going to begin my speech with the idea of marriage when in, when in an Irish society. So what is marriage? Marriage is harmony. It's a bonding of two people, two people becoming one and being accountable to each other. It's not being your own person anymore. It's being with another person and yeah. <laughs> in Ireland, marriage is so sacred that it's made almost impossible to get a divorce. They go based on the Bible, which is where uh, marriage was first mentioned. The very idea of companions living together for their entire lives was first mentioned in the very first chapter of the Bible. In Ireland, marriage is so sacred that it's nearly impossible to ever divorce a spouse. The bond between man and wife is supposed to be eternal. The concept of divorce in Ireland was actually illegal until 20 years ago. Being married to another person means you are no longer responsible for only yourself. You not answer only to yourself. You must now be accountable and be reliable to another person. Marriage was created as a gift between two people, not a temporary connection. It's not dating anymore. So let's discuss the beautiful and unique traditions of Irish marriage. Marriage in Ireland comes with many traditions. It is a wedding you can't leave to your maid of honor. Your whole family is involved from the day you're born till the day you say I do. One of the largest traditions is the Cladach ring. Like all meaningful things, there is a story behind this ring. The story goes, a man named Richard Joyce left his town to work in the West Indies, intending to marry his love when he came back, hoping he would have enough money to provide for both of them. However, his ship was captured and he was made a slave to a Moorish goldsmith. While there, he was trained in this craft and was made the permanent slave of this person. However, when William III became king, he demanded the Moors release all British prisoners. Richard was one of them and was set free. During his time with the goldsmith, Richard forged a ring as a symbol of his love for the woman that he had left behind. When he returned, he was married to her with that ring. So why did I tell you this story? Well, the ring is called a Pladach ring, and the ring itself gets its name from an Irish fishing village. The fishing village was what he was next to while he was in the um, Moorish village, and it reminded him every day of the woman that he loved. The ring is designed to be passed down from mother to daughter, or is a gift given from the fiance. The ring is worn four different ways. First, it's worn on your right hand ring finger. It's worn facing inwards when you are completely single. It's worn facing outwards when you are in a relationship. It's worn on your left hand ring finger facing outwards when you're engaged, and inward on your left hand ring finger when you're married. It's a very complicated and long process for letting everybody know, but you never have to ask what a person's relationship status is, so. If you ever attend an Irish wedding, well, good luck getting out. Doors are always locked. Irishmen are famous for their cold feet in a marriage. The people who attend are responsible for locking the doors so that the groom can't leave. <laughs> Another small tradition is after the marriage. This is known widely as the month of honey. In Ireland, honey is called Mila. The phrase, eh, wait, oh, that's part of my thing. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, so here's, let me go back to this. Here's the rings. Um, this is more of a traditional one where it's got a colored stone and the hands are holding the heart, which represents the fragility of a marriage and how like fragile somebody's heart actually is. Um, and 
this is one of the less traditional ones, but if you don't like rings that are really dainty and you're worried like, you're going to break it, typically I'll get them that one. And then that was just one that it was like rainbow color. I thought it was pretty. <laughs> so this is the month of honey. Uh, the phrase Minamila refer refers to the month of honey. It refers to the month after the wedding when the newlyweds celebrate by drinking mead, a brew, fermented, a brew of fermented honey. The couple is to share the brew for a full month for a full month underneath the full moon because it is known to have aphrodisiac properties. Given the brew is a symbol of fertility and love, we can safely assume what aphrodisiac means in this situation. The, tra the tradition in Ireland is where we get our term honeymoon. However, not everything always works out. Things happen, people change, thus resulting in a divorce, or so I thought. In Ireland, the ability to divorce your spouse was non-existent. It wasn't a right that the Irish had. However, they did have legal separation. But this was basically like signing over everything to the other person and still being accountable to them. <laughs> Until 20 years ago, when the population voted 51% to 49% that the country should be allowed to divorce their partners. So divorce was made legal. Since it was made legal, the country still has only a 6% divorce rate. This sounds shocking, like people really love each other and still want to be together and they don't actually want to get a divorce. But listen to this statistic. In Ireland, the average income is about $24,000, and there's a 20% difference between the lower class and the upper class. The cost of a divorce is about $145,000. That is more than a person is ever going to make in six years. It is so expensive to get a divorce that many people just won't do it. They'll suffer through their marriage, or they'll make a mutual agreement with their partner that they will live with their own companions, but still be legally married. The country of Ireland makes getting divorced so difficult that people just won't do it. Among many, many rules and regulations for getting divorced in Ireland, here are just a few. You must have lived apart for at least four or five years before the divorce is legally issued. The spouses don't have to live in separate homes to be considered leaving, living apart. At least one of them must have lived in Ireland legally for a year, and there is no reasonable prospect of reconciliation, meaning that the one filing for divorce does not actually have to prove the spouse did anything wrong. So every culture has its beautiful, odd, and terrible traditions. First I told you about the traditions in which follow the marriage, and then I spoke about the divorce and its traditions. All cultures are unique. The Irish put a lot into their marriages and do everything they can to prevent divorce. The Irish culture itself is phenomenal. Their marriages are so intricate and they work so hard to make people work things out instead of taking the easy way out of their marriage. All of these statistics were given to me through the Irish Times, which keeps up through the government and through all the law that goes on in Ireland, the International Family Law Firm, and the Not.com. Okay, good.